NASA is already preparing a crew for the first manned mission to Mars and the historic landing of humans on the Red Planet. Currently, four volunteers are undergoing a year-long mission designed to simulate the conditions astronauts will face when they land on Mars in 2029. The journey to Mars will take the astronauts seven months. Until now, the longest space missions have been lunar expeditions, with the trip to the moon taking nearly 79 hours, or about three days. So far, NASA's focus has been on missions within our solar system, but in the future, the agency plans to explore even farther. One day, our technology might enable humans to reach the edge of the universe. Are you ready to be part of this journey? Hello, and welcome to Z. Please don't forget to subscribe. What deadly obstacles will you face on the way? How far is the universe's edge? And more importantly, what lies beyond it? Imagine you have an infinite lifespan, which you've chosen to dedicate to space exploration as a volunteer astronaut for NASA. You arrive in Florida at the John F. Kennedy Space Center. The president shakes your hand, and a huge crowd cheers your name during the launch of the world's first mission to the universe's edge. With a limitless supply of fuel, your journey begins. First, you must reach outer space, but Earth's atmosphere doesn't just end. It gradually thins out. Scientists have defined its boundary at 100 kilometers above sea level, known as the Karman Line, which you'll reach in just four minutes. However, after that, your sense of space and direction will start to change as gravity weakens. The experience isn't exactly pleasant. Zero gravity leads to muscle atrophy, fluid shifts in your body, and changes in blood circulation. Fortunately, your training has prepared you to handle this discomfort, allowing you to enjoy the breathtaking view of Earth from space. But what could ruin such a spectacular moment? the growing noise in your ears and the crackling sensors as you notice the radiation indicators on your dashboard climbing rapidly. At an altitude of 4,000 tilaras brace, you're entering the Van Allen radiation belt, an area around Earth filled with high concentrations of charged particles like electrons and protons, mainly from the sun. You rush through this danger zone, but another, even larger, and more intense belt awaits you 13,000 dollars kilometers farther. You'll need to pick up speed again. Your spacecraft moves farther from Earth, passing the orbits of Mars, Jupiter, and other planets in our solar system. The next barrier is the heliosphere, an area of near solar space that extends 18 billion kilometers from Earth. Voyager 1 took 35 years to reach it, the heliosphere is like a bubble of stellar gas surrounding every star, including our sun, and is constantly inflated by the solar wind, which reaches far beyond Pluto. Outside the heliosphere lies interstellar gas, dust, and streams of charged particles. The main threat here is that when the solar wind collides with these particles, it creates a shock wave. Without the heliosphere, these particles would constantly bombard Earth, preventing life from forming. But now, you must leave this protective shield. It's crucial that your onboard cooling system works flawlessly, or you'll be cooked alive, as temperatures at the boundary can soar to 7,000 Kelvin. For reference, that's almost 2,300 Kelvin hotter than the Sun. At last, you've reached interstellar space. It's pitch black here. You'll be traveling in total darkness for nearly 300 years, a psychological challenge far worse than any physical danger you've encountered so far, as you'll spend all this time alone with your thoughts. How many generations have been born on Earth since you left? Has humanity changed? Has that band finally released their new album? Suddenly, you spot a strange, alien-looking probe in your field of vision, disrupting your thoughts. It's Voyager 2. Launched more than 40 years ago, it's still exploring space and detecting objects, like the ice comet that's now heading your way. The Oort Cloud, 
a region of icy asteroids surrounding our star system, stretches beyond the sun's magnetic field. It's packed with trillions of space objects of varying sizes, some half the size of the moon, classified as dwarf planets. However, the majority are one kilometer wide ice comets, remnants from the solar system's formation. This might be the cooling relief you need after the fiery edge of the heliosphere. But there's another problem. Powerful energy fluxes and magnetic fields in the heliosphere might knock out your electronics. Once inside the Oort cloud, you'll have to manually navigate through the comets. If your spacecraft makes it, you'll be treated to a magnificent view of the Milky Way. The galaxy's center lies almost 26,000 light years away, containing around 400 billion stars. But the Milky Way is home to gamma ray bursts, dust clouds, and most dangerously, black holes nearly a billion of them. The largest, Sagittarius A, sits at the galaxy's core with an estimated mass of about four million solar masses, nearly as big as our entire solar system. If you accidentally get too close, its gravitational field could expose your craft to extreme heat and gamma ray radiation. Fortunately, the nanobots have finally repaired your navigator, damaged by the Oort Cloud's comets, allowing you to adjust your course and steer clear of the black hole's pull. Now, you won't be sucked into the unknown, where your ship and body would be stretched into spaghetti. While some scientists believe black holes could be portals to the universe's edge, it's better to stick to your assigned path unless you're ready to risk the mission. After passing the Milky Way's edge, new challenges await on your journey to the universe's boundary. Your path will take you through hundreds of galaxies, starting with our nearest neighbor, Andromeda. Traveling at light speed, it would take just a year from your perspective, but back on Earth, 2.5 million years would pass before your signal reaches them, and another 2.5 million years for your return message to arrive. It's a situation reminiscent of that tear-jerking scene in Interstellar, where Matthew McConaughey grapples with lost time. But not all dangers come from external threats. Some stem from within. By the time you reach Andromeda, Earth, the pale blue dot, will have faded into the vastness of space. You'll be the first human to experience the crushing isolation of being truly lost in space. Psychologists question whether all astronauts can cope with the fact that they can no longer see their home planet. The mental toll could range from mild depression to full-blown psychosis or even suicide. However, your journey might be so intense that you won't notice Earth's disappearance. Right now, your ship is being jostled by turbulence as it nears a globular cluster. Scientists believe these clusters are remnants of star systems that Andromeda devoured long ago. You're in the realm of a space predator. Getting too close to the cluster can dangerously alter your trajectory, potentially pulling you toward one of its stars. Andromeda has about 13,000 such clusters. After passing them, you'll exit the local group of galaxies and enter the Lania Kia supercluster. You glance out the porthole and chuckle silently. Lani Akia is a Hawaiian word meaning immense heaven. The name reflects how unreachable this supercluster once seemed. But don't get too comfortable. Navigating through it is far more treacherous than crossing the Milky Way or Andromeda by a factor of about 100,000. That's how many galaxies the supercluster contains. Laniakea spans 520 million light years, but the most dangerous area is the active galactic nucleus. Unlike ordinary supermassive black holes, these nuclei are intense sources of electromagnetic radiation. Inside one lies a black hole that devours everything around it, forming an accretion disk that releases tremendous energy. The X-rays and gamma rays emitted here are far deadlier than anything you've encountered. If you manage to dodge these threats, you'll still be nowhere near your destination. So, how much longer will it take to reach the universe's edge? 
You've been traveling for ages, but there's still no sign of it. Does it even exist? Another challenge to your sanity arises. What if your journey has no end because the universe has no edge? Scientists are still debating this. The observable universe isn't that large, about 93 billion light years across. But why do they think there's more beyond it? According to their theories, after the Big Bang, the universe began expanding and hasn't stopped. At the same time, observable data show that the universe is homogeneous on large scales, meaning its properties and the distribution of matter and energy remain consistent no matter where you are. So, the universe might not have edges, but maybe the real danger lies ahead. If your journey lasts long enough, you'll eventually reach the boundary of the observable universe. You'll be among the few to see the cosmic microwave background, CMB, the oldest light in the universe, dating back nearly 13.8 billion years. The CMB marks the edge of our observable universe, but it's not the universe's true limit. Beyond it, the universe continues to expand, possibly hiding unknown galaxies, star clusters, or even the answers to life's deepest questions. In the end, no matter how long you travel, you won't find the universe's true edge. Even with an imaginary spaceship and infinite fuel, you wouldn't reach the universe's boundary because it doesn't exist in the usual sense.